Hi everyone, it's Michelle Lightworker here. Thank you so much for undertaking our Discover Lightworking course and it's designed to help you to find out whether or not you want to step into Lightworker Practitioner training. We cover a really lovely overview here for you so you can actually understand what the difference is between a Lightworker, a Lightworker Practitioner, understand where we come from and the various levels that we take you through in the Master Certification of Lightworker Practitioner Training Program. So let's begin. Just to introduce myself, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Michelle Lightworker. I've been developing the Lightworker Practitioner Training Program for the last, well, to date to, since 2005, so it's to date 12 years. And it has gone from a course that I turned up at to deliver, um, being guided as a spiritual assignment to deliver without any knowledge of what was going to be in the course. And it has turned out to be one where I've uh, written seven books for the training program and also developed the online version now so that it can be fully automated, you can do it at your own pace within a certain time frame, but that you're self-paced and self-motivated to do that. And the reason why we do that is because we believe that the people that are called to do this course are ready. We believe they're ready and they want to dive in and they want to do leading edge training and they want to actually step into their leadership lightworker practitioner training skills. We believe that if you don't feel ready, that you shouldn't push yourself and that we would recommend doing Everyday Lightworker 101 to prepare yourself adequately. We prepare you adequately by taking you through the program a step at a time so that you can actually reflect on how the tools that you could use as a Lightworker practitioner would actually benefit yourself. Now, that doesn't mean that this is therapy training course for yourself. We believe that your therapy should be taken offline. This is definitely professional training. So if it does bring up stuff and you need to actually address that, we recommend that you use your Lightworker Practitioner Training community, the graduates in your community, um, or people that you resonate with to help to support you in that, okay? So that is separate to our course. This is a theoretical course that involves practical hours and activities for you to undertake so that you can get your skates on and feel like you are actually doing a great job at channeling spirit through in your in your consultations whatever that form they may take and we give you plenty of scope to try different things so let's get started and i will start with our induction for you so that you understand what we're more about So, welcome, welcome to Discover Lightworking. And who are we? Well, basically, I just want to let you know a little bit about um, the IICT. Because as you know, uh, I'm Michelle Lightworker. I have a company called Lightworker Reflections. Um, I've been in business since 2005 with the Lightworker Practitioner Training. And Lightworker Reflections was started with my husband and I in 2010. And we started to develop the training through the business at that time. The training was excitedly approved as its own standalone modality, like yoga and Reiki and all those other wonderful modalities that have been recognised as professional modalities and therapeutic modalities. And it was recognised by the Institute of, the International Institute of Complementary Therapists and approved as its own modality in 2013. So we're really excited about that. And you'll find, if you check out the prospectus of the Lightworker Practitioner Training, you will find that as you go through every single level of the training, you actually get recognized for different modalities along the way. Up to around about 40 at the moment, 40 different modalities that can go on your insurance. So you get discounted memberships, you get your um, insurance, your professional indemnity, your public liability, all that good stuff. So in this physical world, you're actually professionally and taking care of business. And that's really important part of being a human being in this, living this earthly experience as well. So they're a really great support for us and our students. Uh, you can become a member of the IICT straight up. You don't have to become don't have to have a great graduated from our programs you can be while you're studying a student member and have access to lots of different things so go right ahead and do that so basically um, we are 
going to move into our introduction to the Lightworker Practitioner Training for you now. Now, who is the Lightworker Practitioner Training for? Well, we like to say that it is really for everyone. It's not exclusive. It's inclusive of everyone. So we invite anyone who's willing to undertake the program, to undertake it, and just go in with eyes wide open, folks, because at the end of the day, we are taking you through um, a stretch of ascension process of consciousness. And if you don't feel ready for it, there's no shame in that. You can do lots to prepare yourself, like I said, with the Everyday Light Worker 101. So there's lots you can do to prepare yourself. But basically, we don't have the philosophy that the training's for particular people. Um, at this time, the training is available for any adult over the age of 18 who applies to do the training. Um, and so that's pretty cool. Um, but really, what we're achieving to do here is to help our people that want to come on board, whether you're a novice and you've never had anything to do with any kind of practitioner training, but you have this calling to do it and you want, you know it's leading edge and you know you're on the leading edge um, in your world that perhaps you want to go on and create your own modalities. Um, maybe you've been a practitioner and you're, um, you're feeling like you really want to round out the skills and you really want uh, to expose yourself to a diverse range of things to see what else is speaking to my soul? You know, it's time for that next stretch, okay? So we recommend that whatever level you're at, wherever you're at, that if you feel the calling and you're willing, that you do do that. And you call on the help of your community in order to do that. We have a lot of people that are willing to support you along the way. So basically, why are we leading edge? You know, uh, we look at the way we're doing what we're doing from a point of unity consciousness. We're not really big believers in competition and we feel that everybody out there offering training is really doing a fantastic service to this planet. We would love to say, oh, we're the be all and end all, but not really. We know that all roads lead to Rome, babe. All roads do. Um, in other words, whatever path people are walking on this world, on this earth, in their journey, um, that is their perfect journey. So we are actually big believers in applying that unity consciousness, which is one of the principles that we live and breathe by, to our training. And that is leading edge because you can take people to a point where they learn about themselves, where they learn about their I consciousness, but then you can take it a step further where we learn about our we consciousness that in every choice we make to choose to step into our own identity and our own uniqueness and our own connection to spirit and our own reason for being here, we can actually then do that for every other person too and see the effect, the instantaneous effect that finding who we are will also affect everybody else as well. So we're all connected and that's a really important point to make about why we're doing what we're doing. We're also extraordinarily um, encouraging our students to really learn more about themselves on their journey and not to think separately, you know, this is just for my clients. So I'm really learning my, about myself along the way too. And like I said, it's not a therapeutic environment for you to, to be in therapy. This is a training program, but it's of course it's going to bring up stuff. And as you work through that, you're going to become a much better lightworker practitioner. That's what I find. I find that every single process that I designed, I was experiencing myself and it took me and it sended me every time. When I was uh, teaching the program and then again when I was writing the program, like in the books, and then again when I was putting it online and just, wow, the processes just kept the ascension process happening. So you know what? It doesn't really matter how many times you do them because they're always going to benefit you. Um, along the way. Uh, basically, really, the way that we just, well, the way the course was channeled through was in relation to different levels of consciousness. So we have an opportunity to explore all those. And I'll take you into that a little bit further along in our slides, just to give you a little bit of an insight as to how we do that. Basically, um, we're real, it's, what's really important to remember is that we're really about encouraging healing through um, a positivity, through finding the gift in any situation. I like to say, you know, out of every little pickle situation, we find the gold nugget, so we transform it. And that is extraordinarily awesome because it's very, very difficult to keep a lower vibrational frequency when you all you see is gold nuggets dropping around you. Okay, so that's why we're really leading edge. It's not about 
seeing life as a problem. It's seeing life as an opportunity to walk through an open door, open door towards ascension. All right, so what is light worker? I'd really like to discuss what a light worker is because I feel like uh, it's important to differentiate between what a light worker is and what a light worker practitioner is. So just to begin though, a light worker and a light worker practitioner are connected because in every light worker practitioner is obviously a light worker. But to start us off, I really want you to know this. Everybody out there in the world, out there in the cosmos, out there anywhere that they are, no matter what role they're playing in society or in the universe, they're helping us on our journey of ascension, okay? So technically, we have been sent nothing but light workers. So like Neil Donald Walsh says, we've, I have sent you nothing but angels, was the words from God spoken through his hands. We agree, and so a light worker really is every single being on this planet, no matter what role you think they're playing, might look dark and ugly, but they're still light workers. So we learn to transform our vision, and that is really important, number one. But a light worker in general is really someone who is stepping in to their own higher self, really connecting with that higher self inside of them as well. So an intentional light worker, you could say, is someone who really connects with their higher self and the motivation for that is to contribute to the healing of the planet. And it may well be that they have uh, a message coming through spirit, like they're channeling that message through and they're sharing that. It may, so they, they can be seen as a messenger of spirit. Uh, it is really about doing what they love because as I said, they're really connecting to their higher self. Now, when you look at people in the caring professions, you might think, oh yeah, they're light workers, cool, because they they're really helping people. But what I, I do see is a lot of burnout and I do see a lot of people in the caring profession actually cut off, cutting off from their heart space because they can't handle it. Disconnecting, um, not necessarily connecting with their higher self, maybe connecting with other parts of, their, parts of their personality that keep them in a very distanced and detached space without feeling that unity consciousness at the same time. So a light worker and a light worker practitioner uh, can be different, but also a light worker and a person in a healing profession can also be different as well. So what I'm saying is they're still light workers, but they're not light workers who are connecting to the higher self at that moment in time. So they're still, still on the journey with us all in that unity consciousness, but the intentional connection to higher self may be lacking. And so they burn out. Very, very common one, that one. So basically uh, light workers, we tend to when we're intentionalities is in the light work and we tend to keep wanting to work on ourselves so that we can help others. So we're bringing that awareness to the planet of oneness, that unity consciousness I was talking about. We're really consciously working with and seeing the light in all of us. We're really able to hold that space and we're living in the light, hopefully with higher vibrational frequencies, being authentic, being who we truly are and sharing that with people and encouraging other people to do that as well. So light work is cool. Um, usually the higher self demands that that's what we do, that we work on ourselves, take responsibility, remain authentic, uh, strive to keep a higher vibrational frequency. So that's a light worker. But moving on to a light worker practitioner, what we find in our framework, our ethical framework that underpins what we do is we're really working from this position of um, what we call the 12 principles. So basically we're going to begin with the fact that um, you know, light, light workers in general are definitely, I, I feel if they're working from their high self, connecting to these high vibrational frequencies. But as light worker practitioners, we are actually intentionally working from an eth ethical framework, okay? So we are actually, when we hit an ethical dilemma and we don't know what to do and we've got a client in front of us and we maybe we've got a toolkit this long and believe me, at the end of the training, you will have a toolkit so big that you know what, there will be something you can pull out at any moment in time that you're guided to do. So that's awesome. But it also means that if we're stuck, we go right on back to our principles straight away. So we learn to navigate these principles in the training. So the, 
the principles which you've probably already been reading there are honesty, open-mindedness, willingness, forgiveness, unity, discipline, faith, responsibility, wholeness, love, joy, and peace. They're extraordinarily high vibrational frequencies and they are absolutely, without a doubt, fundamentally the essence of light worker practitioner training without a doubt so you can't take the principles out of this training and any good light worker will be operating on these principles in fact when i started light worker advocate magazine and i started enlightened conversations which is my tv show i was finding that all the people that i really resonated with they were actually living and operating on those principle frequencies so of course these principles are not exclusive to the light worker practitioner training these are available for everyone but we just pop them in here as this collective because that's what was channeled through and we've worked with them time and time and time again and if you leave one out it just isn't the same magical mix so basically we're about really working at uh as a light worker practitioner awakening the consciousness of our clients that's that's for sure um so that they're more conscious and how they can tap into their connection with themselves their connection with source their connection with their relationship with other people uh, we come from the pre prefaces that everything is happening in perfect order, that we have created all our experiences, that they are all perfect, that the universe has our back, that the universe is supporting us to do everything. Even when we get those closed doors, it's actually pushing us in another direction um, or it's, it's, it's forcing us to get the ax and belt down the door because we absolutely, without a doubt, know we have to be on the other side of that door. And so it's strengthening our will um, and our connection to spirit. So all our experiences, even those yucky ones that look like they're yucky, they all serve a purpose to catapult us towards our enlightenment. We also work from the point of view that we're empowering the clients or tapping into helping them be empowered by not seeing them as victims. We're not seeing them as victims at all no matter how harsh the circumstances. They may have felt victimized and they may have been in a situation that was traumatic, but they're not a victim. They may have been the recipient of some tragedy, but they're not a victim. They are an absolutely infinite being. They are capable of amazing things. We hold space for that. And we also address the trauma. We also address the steps that are required to, for them to regain their true sight of who they really are. We really go in with, tools that heal through joy and not re-traumatize our clients. We're really vibrating at a high frequency because we're, we're calling on the principles that, that the 12 principles that I just talked about. We're really guided to use these uh, so many tools, but also we encourage our students to uh, really grab hold of the ones that they feel they resonate to. And also we encourage them to goodness me, just play with whatever, as you go, you find, oh, I'll use a bit of that tool over there and I'll slide into this tool. That's perfectly fine because we believe that you need to be guided by spirit, not we need to tell you how you should do your light worker practitioner sessions um, when you are owning who you are and what your unique purpose is here. In fact, in level seven, which we'll go on to, um, we, we actually ask our students to design something, create something, and we encourage that to be a part of what they're, they're passionate about and where they're off to. So that's something to look forward to as well. It's a creative genius in you comes out at that stage. So really, basically, we do teach the consults, the readings and the healings. We, we have numerous ones and you will find what you gravitate to. We have a professional practice framework that we encourage you to learn so that your clients always have their free will engaged and you also have... Um, you know, an ability to establish rapport and uh, do, do these therapeutic interventions, space for that, time for that, um, that you have professional etiquette, that you do uh, resonate with your clients and notice when you're not and things like that, and that you allow yourself to understand how to give feedback and follow up and follow through and plan with your, your clients. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of directives in, so far as the professional uh, side of how to be a light worker practitioner as well. Whereas a light worker, well, no one sort of gives you the rule book. You're just doing it on the fly. And we do as light worker practitioners do everything on the fly too with spirit, but we've also got that, that framework set up so that we can offer a professional service that people come to and that, that they feel is actually within the bounds of something that is therapeutically professionally supporting them. And basically the way I like to look at light worker practitioner training is we also really educate the long-term uh, 
self return to wholeness rather than you're broken, you need to be healed kind of mentality and that, that we give them the education, the tools and the support structures to go, guess what, you can do that. Da, 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 da. And we encourage them to take responsibility for that as well. So really stepping into their self-empowerment, their self-responsibility for the long-term holistic healing of themselves and returning to wholeness. So what is spirit anyway? So we, you know, address this question because we want you to know that the all or spirit or the universe, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> here we go. You got the, God, the all God, the universe, creative energy, higher power. It's all part of the same thing that we're really, everything is spirit and everything is the all, that we're all connected. We're all different shades of the all. It's one of the biggest things perhaps that may, may be different from us from other training programs is that we see that everything serves its a purpose, that the darkness is a servant to the light. And so that how the in, within the darkness, if you find a gift, it's no longer darkness. So we do actually dive in and we allow ourselves to learn how to transform the darkness. And we are not caught up on labels and names. So we, we invite you to exercise the principle of open-mindedness and just throughout any names that you have, any, any triggers that you have around names and just say, look, I'll give it whatever name I have to. I'll, you know, if I need to, I'll reframe it and just get on with it because really the truth is we're all connected in unity. So therefore we're, we're expression of source. Let's be the best expression of source we can be and invite our clients to do the same. So really what, out of our perceived separation from the all comes the possibility of the perception of disease, which is really a great statement because it's just our perceived separation from this connection that we do have that is infinite, our infinite truth, that we're all connected. That then come, comes the possibility of the perception of disease, which means that disease isn't really real. Disease isn't really the long-term reality. It may be a short-term experience, but it's not the long-term reality. Now, I just want to mention this because obviously it's been covered in a lot of different movies and proven and everything like that, like The Secret and things like that, and what the bleep do they know. But really, um, what are good vibrations, uh, like higher vibrations as well? And how do we achieve these good vibrations? And how do we raise our vibration? And well, when you look at the building blocks of life, um, every atom has a swirl of energy in the middle of it, so you can see that. And it's basically scientifically and physically proven. And we're basically atoms, well, we are basically atoms swirling around each other. Lots of them, lots of atoms. So what makes us different and how can we heal? So based on this, we, we find that our higher selves and our ability to connect with our higher resources, which, which are those 12 principles in our case that, that we mentioned and a whole gamut of different ways as well that we are covering a few slides now, um, helps us to really raise our energy, raise that ability to, to swirl and shift our vibrations. So basically we also find that the healing processes themselves quicken where we might have found that we stayed bogged down for too long, ah, bang, we shift. Um, and we also find that then our vibration, because we're all atoms swelling around each other, affects other people's vibrations as well. And we tend to be uplifting people. So we also find that out of the perceived separation that we have from the all, when we're feeling disconnected, I'm sure you at some point in your life felt that way, we do find that that are the possibility of the perception of disease occurs. And I often find that with clients as well. It's like when they feel the most disconnected, that's when the most dis-ease is possible. So it's kind of interesting. And we also find that we attract, well, all of our experiences to us. So we might be experiencing the perception of disease because we need to heal something in relation to returning to wholeness. And as you go along your journey, you find oh, but I was getting so far in my journey. Why do I feel like this now? But I would say it's a compliment. There's something going on that needs to be dealt with so you can ascend to and the next step because you, you've you done great. So there's something that's come up so you can ascend some more. So it's okay. And so we start to realise that, and in our clients as well, we start to realise, wow, they're, they're really coming along. 
and this is happening so that they can step up. Let's help them through it. So this is really just the beginning and we turn up and as I said, we turn every single pickle um, into a shining lantern, gold nugget, every situation serves us and it's really hard to stay on a low vibrational frequency with that attitude. So let's go into, let's dive into our light worker practitioner training overview and take a little look at each of those levels that I was talking to you about, the seven. And they basically uh, re relate to the seven levels of consciousness that we have in our energy centers. And I think the way, the, the reason why spirit actually brought these through this way was from the crown all the way down to the base is, is actually the order of things is because we're really coming into ourselves on a different, in a different way. A lot of people in the old style of teaching the chakras would go from the base up because they wanted you to feel grounded before you actually raised up. But what I'm being shown is, is that when we're pulling spirit down into the body, as we're going, we're becoming more earthed, but also we're becoming more spiritualized as well. And it's not to say that we don't teach you how to ground yourself in level one. In fact, that's a big one is to how to, how to ground ourselves with spirit is a big one actually. So not to worry about that, but basically level one itself it's called making light work. And you know what? It's all about connecting with your crown, connecting with spirit, having a relationship, starting one. Maybe you don't really have one. You, maybe you've got a concept of a relationship, but you don't actually have a relationship with spirit. So it's about actually turning things on, turning on the connection, turning on your ears, turning on your third eye, turning on your uh, empathy, learning how to moderate it, learning how to uh, activate all your psychic abilities that help you, your intuition, your clear cognizance, that help you just know things and really getting comfortable with them. And in that level also, we cover how you do a therapeutic session in that professional manner that I talked about. So right from the very get-go, you've got those tools and those strategies to help you, okay, if you want to conduct a therapy session, what's the order of operations? And you've got the client card. You've got the, okay, how do I start this? You've got the runs on the board. How do I do a simple session? You've got the support to, to learn all that, which is really lovely. And at the end of that level, you actually do qualify as a certified light worker practitioner. So you can actually um, get, your, get your membership, uh, not just a student membership, you can actually get a graduate membership, even though you're in the middle of your master's, at the beginning of your master's because every single level on top of level one is going to add to your toolkit and your skill base. Of course, it's going to evolve you because you're going to be learning about and unlocking and activating every other energy center that you've got. Okay, so level two, we move down to our third eye. It's about seeing the truth of relationship dynamics, our relationship with ourselves, which is awesome, learning about that. Our relationship with spirit, like learning about how we can improve that, our relationship with other people. So the truth of the lower vibrational frequencies and dynamics, the truth of the higher vibrational frequencies and dynamics we can have, how we can create that, how we can help our clients to create that as well. And also we learn about when I'm talking about those lower vibrational frequencies, we also learn how do we get the gold nuggets out of our addictions because they are serving us to help us to do our purpose and they may seem destructive but mark my words they've got a message so we learn about how to deal with them we also learn about the other side and we learn how to connect with those who have crossed over because there may be some family unfinished business that we need to deal with ourselves and also there may be for our clients something hanging around someone wants to give them a message so we take it there and we learn those skills as well but not just as a, I'm a medium, I'm telling you what I'm hearing, that kind of stuff. We really take it to the point of resolving unfinished business. We really want that. We want them to be at peace. We want our clients to be at peace. We want to be at peace. So it's about making peace with ourselves and other people and the other side. When it comes to level three, we're stepping into uh, deeper work on transforming our shadow. What, what we mean by shadow is our unconscious aspects of ourselves. So we actually work on transforming the dar darker aspects of our personality to find those gold nuggets. And also not only that, but the lighter aspects of our um, vibrational frequencies too, because we might have disowned those 
in, in past lives or in our past history because we're afraid. We've got some fears coming up. So we really learn to knuckle down and do the work that we need to do and to be able to recognise as we do that work in other people how they can do that as well, how we can facilitate that for them as well. And it's amazing work. It, I, I found that when you actually get into shadow work and you work it and you do it, it's the, my goodness, it's almost like someone has given you a shortcut to peace because often we think, oh, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. It's like, it is so awesome when you walk that. It's just like, can you imagine that you are walking a fearless life, that you're just not afraid of anything anymore? That's how good it is. Not kidding. It's that good. So if you step into fear, you step right out of it, like within, if you do one of the processes, like almost immediately, it's, it's just not fear anymore. So it's pretty awesome stuff, guys. Level four um, is vibrating in the light. It's about our heart and it's about our um, ability to connect in unity with the outside world. And I forgot to mention that in level three, it was about speaking our truth. So throat chakra consciousness, but it's pretty easy for you guys to get it that once you're actually not afraid of certain aspects of yourself, then those aspects can speak, those transformed aspects can speak through you and you get the best of them. So we're moving into the heart chakra though with level four and really connecting with, oh, when I hit level four, I really felt like the universe had just offered up so many plethora of resources, it's ridiculous. I've got plant um, meditations, animal spirit guide meditations, you've got crystal guardian initiations, you've got, you're just really connecting with the essence and vibration of this beautiful planet that we're on. And we're connecting through the heart. And so it's a really beautiful um, level of training that we work, work through that really connects us. And we, we dive into connection and feeling and so it's, it's extraordinary. And then we move on to uh, level five, which is playing in the light, which helps us to take hold of different creative mediums, such as painting, clay, drawing, and really allowing the child in us to play and the power of that play, the, plow, the power of getting out colour without worrying what the end result's going to be like. This is, a, this is process work. So it's about learning how to really uh, explore the connection we have with the medium that we're using and our soul, our soul. So we, we work through processes that help us to, that are designed to help us to um, resolve our issues and take us through it in a playful way so that by the end of the process, we're fully resourced. And then we can go on and help other people to do the same. So it's, it's, it's an awesome, fun experience and get you're allowed to get messy you're allowed to muck, muck get mucked up we learned we learned a whole heap of different tools to do that and it's just a lot of fun in level six it's called the light field bean and we're really tuning into our bodies and we're actually allowed it's our sacred chakra it's all about being nourished and so it's about learning how to nourish ourselves with our food but not only that really delving into a what the thing you might not understand is that when we're talking about the chakras is is that they are epicenters of incredible wisdom in and of themselves and as we've been working our way along our lives we haven't really known that that's what they're for we have no idea when we start to actually say we i'll give you an example we, we tap into our sacral chakra that's probably the one seeing as we're talking about the sacral chakra level and we wonder actually how the sacral chakra is relating to say our third eye and we this is what we will do in level six is we will actually find out how the sacral chakra is working with all our other chakras and um, same goes with all our other chakras and how they're relating and the reason why we do that is we want to get to know them intimately we want to form and forge a relationship with these energy centers to really validate them, to really unlock them and to really activate their wisdom because we don't have to think our way to understand a chakra. The chakra will actually teach us what we need to know. So for instance, in that situation, it may well be that 
our third eye feels really disconnected from our, ch our sacral chakra, which should be nourishing it. And so then they, we, we learn how to bridge the gap so that we're not afraid to open our third eye because it's not burnt out or overused. Uh, whereas in the past, perhaps we did that. So that's a really solid example of what we would do in level six. There's lots more we do in level six and we, we do talk about transforming a lot to do with the body and, and the spin off of doing that kind of work on the body as well. So level six is awesome and it really helps us to come into our bodies and to feel much more connected to it in how we exercise, how we, how we move it and uh, a lot of fun things there. And last but not least, we have level seven which is our base chakra consciousness, which is all about, yes, us being grounded, but it is also about us feeling that we're okay with being on this physical plane, that we're actually okay being in this physical world, that we own the fact that we have chosen to be in this physical world. So we learn how to actually be this transformational presence in physical form. And how that affects everyone. We learn how to collaborate with people. We learn how to co-create with people. We learn about what that transformational presence does for our manifesting abilities. We learn about how to best market our business, which is very physical because that is an expression of our transformational presence as well. We learn about our sexuality and how we can connect, really connect in a healthy way to that to allow ourselves to be more in our base as well, where we might have been shut down or had poverty consciousness or sexual anorexia or something like that, we learn how to step into uh, feeling uh, fearlessness and, and feeling that we're fully owning our sexuality as well. So it's very powerful. And like I said, at the end of level seven or actually throughout level seven, we're invited to co-create with spirit or someone else, a, a, something, a creation of our own that we feel we're being called to do, which is an awesome invitation to really get a start on your business if that's where you're heading or another uh, project that it has been calling you and you can get excited and really start to enjoy working with it. So that's basically the summary of the seven levels. They're all really different, aren't they? But can you understand the reason why they're really different is because every single level of consciousness has its own special, unique magic about it. And we honor that. And I understand why spirit channeled them through in seven levels. So it wasn't about one's better than the other, trust me, not at all. In fact, I would have to say that earlier levels are probably harder than the latter ones. So trust that, I think it's, I think it's because we get used to the 12 principles, we cover them in every single level. And we get an in-depth understanding of them over and again. By the end of it, just whizzing through it because you've mastered them and you, the magicking starts to happen. People say, I'm just flying through the end of the I'm like, yeah, I understand. I did too when I was writing. Oh, same kind of thing. So that's pretty encouraging as well. So let's move on to the last little bit. This is really interesting. I, I, I actually found... When I was writing level um, level one, when I first le wrote level one, um, Spirit uh, wrote down what the mission statement and intention was for the Lightworker Practitioner training. And so I'm going to uh, let, I'll read it first and then I'll explain what this, what it actually means. So it'll, it'll become clearer. So this new way of being, this new way of being, will create and build energy towards a group consciousness of living in the light and spiritualizing matter. So what that means is, is we're not about so much about self-actualization in the eye for that to be the end. We're about self-actualizing and coming into a sense of who we are to create and build energy towards group, unity, consciousness of living in the light, choosing to live in our higher self. And from doing that, as we're all doing that, we start to change everything around us and ascend and the frequency lift, the frequency of the physical plane. So that is really powerful stuff, guys. It's something that I don't think 
I don't know, maybe a lot of other courses talk about it. I would hope so. I hope that that's the way courses are being designed. This came through in 2005 and it's still, I think, ahead of its time at this point. But this is where consciousness is heading. So I, I'd love for you to hop on board and I'd love for you to join us if you feel guided to. If you don't, that is cool. And there is no judgment from us because we're not really wanting big numbers. We just want really keen people on board to build our community in a solid way without expectations of perfection, without thinking that you have to be a certain way in order to be approved. Just be you, turn up, be willing. And when we connect with spirit and we allow spirit into the mix, anything is possible. So blessings to you all. Thank you for enjoying the, hopefully enjoying the presentation. I'm sure that within you now, you have the clarity of whether or not you are meant to join us or whether or not you are meant to choose some other training or another part of the journey. Blessings to you all. Lots of love. Yeah.